research journey, uh, but basically, I, I, as, as Dominic said, that uh, not everybody can speak to their immigrant ancestor anymore because that they're long gone, or if they are the immigrant themselves, you know, they have their story. Um, I, uh, I started getting interested in this when everybody that I should have been talking to was dying. Um, my Polish grandmother, my dad's, my name's obviously not Italian, my dad's mother died in 91, and the last of the immigrants on the Italian side died in 1992, and that's when I said, gee, now I need to get started. <laughs> okay, so what, what did I know? I didn't have these talks to uh, tell me that it's the next thing to do, so uh, for anybody who will have somebody to speak to who knows the... Uh, uh, the, the ways of the old world. There, there's, there's a little bit of a difference between genealogy and family history. Genealogy is what I'm going to mostly teach you uh, in these classes till the end of time, I guess. <laughs> the, my contract says it'll be next door to my house, but okay, you know. Uh, and uh, so it's, uh, it's easy to find the records and have, okay, I've got a chart, you know. Uh, that, that process takes a while to learn, but it can be done. The thing that is, can only be done uh, in person is to speak with somebody who goes back to the old days. And uh, you know, my, my, uh, since I was last here in September, my 101-year-old grand aunt, now she was born in Chicago, but her, some of her siblings were born in, in Trujano, uh, Bari. Uh, she passed away and uh, and the point I made at the talk and then in the Franoi column is that there's, they, science has not found a way to extract the memories out of a person while they're living or beyond that. So it's a very, very important thing to Dominic's point that you got to record anything you find out about just the general way of life of the people that we're studying in the genealogy. Um, because that that's really going to be again. Then you got to read books, and you're reading about somebody else's family, and maybe it's close. But to truly know what your family went through, you got to talk to the people that you can. But um, uh, like I say, that's that's a different art, and uh, more of the uh, science is to be able to um, find the information about uh, the family that we know and then find out who we don't know and see what we can do to gather that information together. I should have brought, I, I've got a nice ancestor chart that I printed in a scroll um, back when my company had a, 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 a AutoCAD plotter that printed on pages this big instead of taping little pages together. Uh, they don't have that plotter anymore, but uh, I've got an old chart. I should have brought it just to say, this could be yours. Um, so, uh, we've talked about so far there being four workshops, uh, however many we're going to do here, but uh, this today we're going to really get down to the basics. If you've already done uh, some genealogy, you're going to nod your heads and go, yep, I've done that. Uh, if you've done nothing, you just know in your head, okay, yeah, I know mom and dad, I know he was born sometime around 1912, he died sometime around 1988, whatever. Um, but, uh, and then... The, the first first thing I had to first thing I had to learn was that my Polish grandmother's name was not Busha. That wasn't her name. Okay, so everybody here who's got nonas, um, you know, need, uh, needs to uh, find, find out what nonas name. If you called her by her name, you got the spoon. I I, I know. So, but we're going to talk about just very basic stuff about knowing what you don't know, what people do. Okay, and I and I I. Uh, there's a line from a Monty Python skit that I always apply to myself. I'm a completely self-taught idiot. Uh, everything I did, I did the wrong way and then found out that was the wrong way and learned the right way. And then I teach you folks the right way. So um, one of the things I learned, you know, was again, somebody's talking about the family history, try to write it down unless you got a photographic memory. Um, a lot of things like that, um, but uh, just you're you're gonna you're gonna go through um, on the back of the handout when I get to that point. Uh, I've got an empty. There should be an empty chart. I actually didn't look at the uh, handout. 
Um, so uh, we're going to find out what we don't know. Um, I've been doing this 30 years, and do I know, yeah, I mostly know their names, and I could probably, I, I know I couldn't put down dates on a, on a blank chart. Um, so just a lot of people, I, I wasn't one of them, but I've seen a lot of new people say, oh, okay, I'm looking up my family, the Russos. I'm going to find every Russo in, okay, they at least know, that if they know the town, they've narrowed it down by that much. Now I've got to find every Russo in town. Okay, I don't know if that's a good idea. They may be all related to each other, but that's, that's a tough way to start. You want to figure out what exactly you need and then laser beam focus on that item. What I need, the marriage date of my great-grandparents. Okay, so that's the thing you find. If you get lost in the proverbial rabbit hole of, oh, I'm going to find everybody with the name and maybe they're related, uh, that's, that's not a good way to start. You might want to, you know, when you're years into it, you might want to do it. I'm going to talk to you in the second workshop about FamilySearch.org, um, completely free website. I'll explain more about it later on. And if you're not uh, using it, you probably will before this process uh, uh, is over. And then uh, I'm going to dig in in the third workshop really heavily into the civil records uh, for the folks who know how to read Italian already, you're that many steps ahead of where I was, and you know, I don't speak the language, I don't understand anybody who talks at normal speed of Italian, which is super duper duper fast, uh, at least that's how they talked to me when I went to Italy, um, but we, what we, uh, we want to do is uh, figure out exactly where the data is in each kind of record, the formats change a little bit, and, um, and then all kinds of tips on dealing with that. And then the fourth one, assuming it's four, again, we haven't really did, figured all that out. Uh, we're going to talk about some advanced topics that the vast majority of researchers have not taken advantage of, and they should. So, getting started. This is truly getting started. Um, well, I'm jibber-jabbering up here. The I think it's the seventh page of the... Um, handouts, not quite on the back, I think it's inside on, uh, of the back page, is a blank chart, okay? Basically, you know, I, I say, when I'm in a public library, I say, this is an NCAA chart, half of it. And they go, oh, okay, but I'm in an Italian place, so this is a World Cup chart, okay? <laughs> it's half of it, okay? So you're the champion, you're in the center, and yeah, I could have I could have done a chart that does both sides, but then you wouldn't be able to read it at all. There wouldn't be room to write on it. So basically, to do one side of it. Um, at some point, I'm gonna have a Franoi column out about this. It'll be a link to a chart. You can print it at home, do whatever. Um, but the objective is start with yourself. So go. You feel free to write. It's your handout. You write yourself your birth date, your birthplace, marriage date, marriage place, if you want to. None of you are dead, so you don't have to fill in the death part. And then you go up as your, um, start with you. So the way these charts go, for whatever reason, somebody decided that the fathers are up and that way, and the mothers are down and that way. So, you know, go ahead and try to fill in. I, I, I want to see how many people, how far you get when we get farther into the talk, because... Again, I've been doing this. It's it's in my, the forefront of my brain. I mean, not much else is, but it's this. So yeah, I can fill in myself, my dad, my mother, my grandparents' names. Great grandparents' names are tough, uh, and then great great grandparents' names. If you know any of those off the top of your head, you're doing way better than most. Okay, so I, I, I'm going to keep going rather than talk. You know, talk through it. You guys can fill it in as as we're going along here. Um, you will you will reach a point where you're going to go okay um, we're in the million dollar question on who wants to be a millionaire and I I'm not going to get this so you can give up at that point what I basically the, the boxes show married in the middle but it's hard to write all that into the box um, so what I suggest is you write the marriage between mom and dad on any set of parents but basically again genealogy just 
the fact part of this. And again, I, I, I always must stress that the history, the family history part of it is as important, if not more important. Because, you know, you're going to sit down with a grandchild and you're going to say, hey, my great grandma was born in 1879. And you know what the kid's going to say? What do I care? <laughs> They'd probably say it now. Okay. So, but, but if you say, taste this sauce, taste this. My grandmother used to make it like that back in the old country. Oh, now you, now you, okay. The food gets their undivided attention, you know, and they're going to go, my, that's the oldest sauce I've ever tasted. Right. So that, that it's, it's as important, if not more so, but for knowing who we're talking about and to give them as much of a personality, the personality is going to come from memories that you might have. Um, uh, but if you don't have that to go by, I mean, my, all of my great grandparents were long dead before I was born. And um, because everybody was old when they had each other. So my mom was 37. Her mom was in her 30s. So, you know, getting to great grandparents is not, not easy uh, for, for my family. But if you're like other branches of my family, we, my, the, the great grand aunt that was 101, uh, two months before she passed away, her great, great, great Oh. granddaughter was born yeah. wow. and they were able they met so the, the baby has no idea the old lady was in <laughs> a little bit of the beginning of failure but she knew who, who it was and and all that stuff and so yeah so six, six generations to, to compare six yeah. generations in one family uh, the youngest of my great 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 grandparents died 62 years before my birth this kid got one during life. So that's the, the I, I love throwing these stats at my coworkers who have no concept of the Italian family or the, oh, they had seven kids of 20 years difference and the kids and grandkids are the same age. They can't figure that stuff out. So that's one of, some, one of the fun things we get is that after doing some of the research and finding the facts, we get to say, hey, check this out. And they're gonna be like, whoa, so for seven basic pieces of information, obviously the person's name, you want to record on the chart their name at birth, especially because what we're going to find out is when we get to talking about Italian records is that uh, uh, the uh, Italian women are mentioned by their maiden name in their birth, in their marriage, and in their death, and at the cemetery on their crypt. So many of you may know that, but... There are people that don't know that, and they go, well, how come I can't find a death record for my great-great-grandmother who died in Italy? Because you're looking under her married name. Okay, problem number one. So, birth date, birthplace, death date, death place, marriage date, and marriage place. There's seven very basic facts that end up, when you print out a chart, if you put it in the computer, you can use all kinds of different software, you can just use family search, you can use uh, uh, Ancestry. There's many places to put it. Uh, but when you print a basic Ancestor chart, these seven facts are going to appear for everybody who has them. And like I say, just writing it on the chart, you don't want to put, you know, if you try to cram the marriage in the middle, it doesn't give you a place for both marriage date and marriage place. So, basically, here... It's, it's a simple, it's, it's simple to describe what to do, then I got to describe how to do it. That's why it's going to be until the end of time. Um, you, what you're going to do as a genealogist is to find a source document that confirms what you know for each of these facts. I mean, it's a lot of facts. You got seven facts for you, okay? You can subtract death. You're not dead. Marriage, okay? Maybe you're not. So, so I mean, you got three facts. That's easy. Okay, now you got to do your mom and dad. Let's hope they got married, but no guarantees, you know. And you put that all in. So you got, you know, five facts for them, maybe seven if they're gone. And then, so as each, like we got you, two parents is three, four is seven, eight, and 16. That's a lot of people times seven. That's a lot of facts. Subtracting a couple in there. So you're going to find what you know and back it up 
with, with some kind of a document, and you got to find what you don't know. And when you're writing down and you can't fill in your great-great-grandparents, there's a lot you probably don't know. Okay? So that's the stuff you need to go find. The good news is that the method is going to apply pretty much the same whether you're looking for someone in uh, 1910 or someone in 1810. So, so basically, starting out. Now, if you're born in Italy, again, half the battle is over, which is what town are you from? Okay, if you're from there, and again, I... I never have to worry about this at a public library in New Lenox, okay? <laughs> if you're born in Italy, oh, okay, my grandma was from there, I think, you know, that, that's about it. Um, so you, um, uh, what most people, you know, if, if you're talking to someone from California, do you, you know, where do you say you're living, okay? Do you say the suburb you're in or do you say Chicago, okay? I still say Chicago. If they're in, Northern Illinois, then I tell them I'm in Vernon Hills, and they at least know what that is. So the problem is, is that when Grandma tells you we're from Naples, we are from Bari, we are from Palermo, chances are they're not. Okay, if they could live in the big city, they probably had enough money that they didn't have to come over here most of the time. Uh, if anything sounds like a generalization, it doesn't apply to everybody, because none of it does. Um, but, um, you know, my, I mean, my Polish grandmother told me before I cared about it that they were from Krakow, okay? When I found out where they were from, I went to the cemetery, and I looked down at her grave, and I said, Grandma, we got to get you an atlas. We are, we are so far from Krakow, you know, we're, luck, we're luckier in Europe, okay? Um, and you're going to get that problem if your family, if you are born here and your family is from Italy, where are they from? You got to have the little town, the comune, because if you don't, um, you're going to be hunting. I, I, I literally was looking in the city of Bari when I first started, self-taught idiot. And I'm like, again, the only one I could talk to was my grand aunt. I said, I'm looking for everybody's birth records. They're not in Bari. Oh, from Trijan, Trijan. Okay, it's Trigiano. We love to cut those vowels off, but it affects the spelling when we're looking for things. So by the time I translated from her Italian American English to the record town, you know, then I was well, then I looked for everybody and I found them. So, but finding a birth date and a birthplace for someone who where you don't have it already memorized from having spoken to them about it. Okay, I mean, you know, uh, how do I put this? My, my, my father, he was born in Chicago, of two people who were born in Poland. This will apply to you too, obviously, for, uh, for Italy. Uh, but the, his two parents decided at the beginning that they were not going to be a Polish family who happened to be resident in Chicago and talk Polish to their son and raise him as a Polish kid. They raised him as an American kid who happened to have ancestors from Poland. That's a big difference because when you have that, that means you don't talk about the old country, you don't get into all the details because you're tr you're literally trying to kind of force them into a different frame of reference growing up. So my father, the only Polish he learned was to talk to the guy that sharpened the knives in the street because that guy didn't speak a word of English. And he had a bunch of knives. He didn't want to mess with him. <laughs> didn't want to alienate him. So it's yeah, so that's so so I, I don't have that issue with my Italian ancestors, but if any of you do, it will affect how much you've learned from the people you've spoken to. So you might need to use documents that have information on them. And I'm gonna tell you that the um, the accuracy and the detail of these documents is all over the place. Um, it will take the second, maybe into the third uh, of these talks to really get into why this document is junk and this document is great, okay? But I will explain them to you as possibility. Birth date and birthplace, if they're born, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus heavily on Chicago. I know some of you, you know, you might be from Pittsburgh, you might be from Paducah, 
and yeah, I can't, but I can't talk about every town for this group, but I can at least say, okay, if the majority of you that are not from Italy are from Chicago, um, and you're looking, you know, maybe the, the records that are available, and this stuff's on family search, that's why you gotta come next month, because the family search talk, I get to teach you how to find Chicago, Cook County, birth, death, and marriage certificates for free. You don't want to pay Cook County. Do it for free. In fact, that's a generalized statement. If you learn nothing out, out of this talk uh, except this one fact, you can find a lot of stuff on the free genealogy websites or you can use paid genealogy websites at certain libraries where they are free to you. Do everything you can there before you start shelling out money to anybody. Cook County, the town in Italy, um, I'm not going to ask a show of hands because some of you might not want to raise them, but um, uh, there, I, I, at the very, very beginning, self-taught idiot, I said, oh, the only way I'm going to do this is to write a letter to the town in Italy and ask them to send me a copy of the piece of paper. And if you did that, that's great. I'm going to teach you how to not do that because that's very inefficient and not all the towns respond. They're legendary for not responding. They take your, you know, and especially if you put money in the envelope and send it over there, they go, ah, free gift. And then crumple, crumple, crumple. Yes? One town responded and the other town just took the money. Mm -hmm. The town that responded sent me back the money. They That's so sweet. Sad. <laughs> so the, so they averaged out to be okay, but it was all okay. Well, that's that's a good good point to make of, of everybody that when you, you you're also going to find out you probably don't have only one town. Um, my my father sent it many many years ago to his hometown. We never got a response. We never got the money. We never got the papers. We never got anything. I thought you were going to say my father sent it many many years ago, and it last was. week last week we got the response. <laughs> He's been dead for five years. It, well, the, but. The, the, the people, at, the people at the town, they, you know. No, I mean this was like ten years ago. Or yeah, years no, that ago. It, it is. His town that he remembered where he was it's child. quite legendary that they are town. not always very responsive, and and, and it's, I can't speak for why except to say that, um, I know that when I went to Italy in two thousand and three, uh, yeah, it's almost twenty years now. We waited till right after nine eleven to do international traveling. <laughs> Again, we're. We learn the hard way of everything. But um, the people, some of the folks over there, the Americans go back and they start writing letters and asking for documents, and they look at it as though somebody's trying to make a claim to be the eldest son of the eldest son of the eldest son, and that they now own that house or that land or that kind of thing. It's preposterous, but if people think that way, they're not exactly helpful to help you establish. It's like, okay, you don't have that established? then, all right, we'll just hold them up. But has that changed if you do it now? Like, I mean, 15 years ago, maybe people had to actually make a photocopy and everything, but now they can email you the copy, or no, they don't have email. Anymore. They, no, they don't do it that way. That's in fact, true. they can't, they, they, by law, they're not allowed. Here's the funny part. Right. If you go to Italy, and you go to your civil records office, and you walk in the door and say, I need a copy of my father's birth record, they will not make a Xerox or let you take a photo with your phone by law. They will write it on a, a document called an estrato, extract. And they will write the information from the original record on the extract, and they will then hand that to you. And if you probably got to pay a little more if you want it stamped, <laughs> that it's official. This is an, a, a copy. I actually need this for my father. So you can't get like an actual copy. The irony yeah, is, you can on Family Search, oh. but you can't at the Civil Records Office. It makes no sense. I mean, I never tried it, so I don't. No, that's but that's I just this wondered is. wondered if they could email it to you nowadays with so much. I, I've not. I, well, I haven't tried it because I'm doing everything on my own yeah. anyway. Um, yeah, it, it, I don't know about email. I, I I was lucky enough to be able to email the parish priest in my town. Uh, in 2003. Somehow there was an email address. I wrote a note in English. I brought it to a friend to translate. I wanted every syllable perfect and then I sent it and I got a response. I told him I'm gonna be in I'm gonna be there from America in September of 2003 and I really want to come and research 
my genealogy in your church, and he wrote me back within 24 hours. Oh, wow. That never happens. Okay. <laughs> that <why I> <laughs> never happens. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, yeah. Oh, we we are now in advanced class territory, but it's 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 actually good to know where the finish line is, and there is none. I mean, he says for the, for all eternity. That's how long you research, because for everybody, there's two parents. You know, for everybody, it's like, okay, I found everybody I can possibly find, and here's two more. Now what do I do? Okay, so it goes on and on. You really never, you don't, you never really finish. You just sort of say, well, I'm going to do something else with my time now after, you know, three days a week of eight hours a day for 30 years kind of a deal. Birth dates and birthplaces. Um, if they're born in Chicago then obviously the birth certificate's the best document because it's mostly filed when it happens. Now, not everybody has a birth certificate. Before 1916, it was not even mandatory in Cook County to have a birth certificate. And after 1916, not everybody bothered either. Okay, for one thing, if our parents grew up poor, and again, I don't like generalizations, but this one kind of applies. You, you got a mom having a baby, dad's working six, seven days a week. He doesn't have time to go to City Hall and file the paperwork. Mom obviously is wiped out from the ordeal, so she's not doing it. So, okay, midwife. These are at home, the home births. Midwife, go to City Hall, register my kid. Okay, well, midwife's got another birth to go to, and then another birth to go to, and then another birth to go to. And that takes priority over standing in line at City Hall. So guess what? Never makes it to City Hall. Happens a lot. And if the parents are not citizens, they don't have to necessarily follow these regulations anyway. So they don't always do it. So uh, later on in life, they're like, okay, I need a passport. I need a copy of my birth certificate. And they go to City Hall. City Hall says, don't have one. Never had it. Or it's spelled so poorly <laughs> that they can't find it. So now you go back and say, okay, this is me. I'm here. I'm a human being. Uh, and they say, all right, well, you need to file. Right, you're filing what's called a delayed birth certificate. These are also on the Cook County and on the um, uh, Family Search website when I am able to show you that. Um, but uh, so somebody might file a birth certificate in 1947 for a birth that took place in 1903. And what they do is, you know, the parents are maybe no longer around, but they say, okay, here's, uh, here are some things um, to back it up. Here's a military ID card, which has the birth date on it, okay? The U.S. military accepted that date when they took him in and sent him off to World War II. Here's a paper from his school, says the same birth date, and affidavit from his brother, who was 10 years old when he was born, that's my brother. He was born June 18th, 1903, whatever. So they just add these things together. So the, the delayed birth records are kind of cool because you get these other sources kind of mentioned. Um, but it's basically pr confirming that either they can't find it or they never filed a, a birth certificate. This may apply in other cities, but I, I, I can only really speak for Chicago and Cook County. Um, Death certificates as a place to find a place of birth and a birth date. Eh. Um, first off, most death certificates, the only thing they say is Italy or Illinois. They rarely put the detail. Um, the birth dates, you know, if, if the person filing it knows what's going on. If it's a hospital record and the hospital already has your birth date recorded in their computer, then it's fine. Uh, if it's a family member who's grieving and they just don't remember Papa's birthday, they're going to get it wrong. It, it's so because it's a, it's the death certificate's going to be accurate as far as the death, but not as far as the birth necessarily because of the time between the birth and the filing of that piece of paper. Now, census records. Uh, if you've done any, again, these are all things that are on Family Search. Census records don't give you the name of the town. I wish they did. You're, they're going to say Illinois or Italy. Okay, that you'll you'll almost never get anything more detailed than that. Um, 
So, but at least if you're looking for somebody and you can't find the one you're looking for, one of the methods you need is say, well, okay, I'll find a sibling. And maybe that'll help me find the parents that I need. Um, so this, it'll say, okay, here's the um, census record. Joseph, Italy, Constance, Italy, Nicholas, Italy, Tony, Italy, Francis, Illinois, Mary, Illinois. Okay, at least I know which ones are here, which ones are there. So you don't waste time writing to Cook County for a birth certificate uh, and um, for somebody who was born clearly in Italy. And you don't waste time writing to Italy for somebody who was, uh, you know, born here. So the census can give you that. Citizenship papers. Somebody actually showed me one before uh, the talk. Uh, those are very nicely detailed. Sometimes things are spelled wrong. Because uh, again, our, our ancestors whose English skills might have been limited are speaking to a clerk whose English skills are not quite so limited or limited in a different way, and then you end up with things spelled wrong. Uh, I mentioned earlier that my family is from Trujan, Trujan Obari, okay? Well, somebody said Trujan to the, rec to the clerk who wrote up the citizenship papers, and they actually wrote in T-R-E-E -E space J-O-H-N. Oh, brother. Yeah. Luckily, the brother, it, it was spelled right. The brother wrote it on their own form. So Trujan. Uh, that kind of stuff is a problem on citizenship papers. But citizenship papers give a birth date, they give a city of birth, which again can be misspelled, or sometimes they don't record the, the region or the province that they're in. Um, I've got family from Carbonara as well, and there are four Carbonaras in Italy. So if they just say Carbonara Italy, you might not have enough detail. That's where the relative that says Bari, that's where they come into play. Because you say Carbonara, Carbonara, Italy. Well, Auntie said from Bari. So you find out it is the Carbonara that's near Bari, that's the right one. So you, you don't just dismiss uh, the, the one relative out of uh, hand. So, but citizenship papers, birth date, birthplace of the person being made a citizen, uh, spouse, name, birth date, birthplace, uh, marriage date and marriage place is usually on there. These are these are details a lot of other records don't have. And uh, occasionally you got a little photo in the corner, which is really sweet. When I show you these, um, uh, I mean, there's people that don't have, a, there's no other photo except their, you know, I mean, take, take whatever happens when you go to the Department of Motor Vehicles and no matter what you do, the picture always looks like this. Um, yeah, the, the citizenship papers, uh, they're a little more upbeat because they're like, ah, oh, we're going to get the citizenship thing over with, you know. Uh, unfortunately, A, not everybody became a citizen. Um, what I've run into, I, I've, I've researched my family, but I've also researched like people that married into the family and done their ancestry for the sake of their kids, you know. So it gives me a little bit of outside of my Bari comfort zone. And what I found out is that... Uh, in, in many cases, like, well, why didn't they become a citizen? What happened? Well, if they served in the military, like World War I or World War II, they could get their citizenship right away, so there will be a paper. There just won't be a lot of detail on it because it's like, okay, you served your country, adopted or not, and here it is. Um, and then um, the, where was I going? Um, if a family has sons in the service. The parents don't always, again, I hate generalizations, but you might run into this if it applies to your family. The parents don't always become citizens. Uh, my step-grandfather, four brothers, each joined a different branch of the service, and both parents died during World War II, but neither one of them bothered to become a citizen before then, and once they had four stars, luckily none of them gold, in their window, they had a public affirmation that they were for this country, okay? So they and maybe they would have become citizens after the war, they didn't live long enough. Um, 
So sometimes you run into that. If you don't have sons in the military, and, and again, World War II in particular, uh, Mussolini being the enemy at that moment, uh, then it's like, okay, we better establish, you know, they ran in, in quite a bit in the early years of that time frame, at least a lot of my family did, and got their papers filed before. You, you're going to find in, in a census records, there's a column that mentions their citizenship status. Um, I guess I don't want to say the word that ends starts with C and ends with P, that describes how accurate that data is. Um, but um, what uh, you, uh, everybody everybody filed their papers according to the census taker, except that they didn't. <laughs> I could prove that. They just put they put PA in that. And I, I actually had people go, well, I, I didn't know my family was from Pennsylvania. No, they're not from Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. PA meaning filed papers. They were afraid that the government had coming every 10 years. They didn't remember why they were coming. They just thought, uh-oh, they're going to send us home. Yeah, yeah, we filed our papers. We filed our papers. Of course, they didn't check. So, okay, they got away with it for another 10 years. Um, I would not trust that column to necessarily indicate that now you should be searching for the previous 10 years. Yeah, so Dominic. We need to mention here that for a uh, short period of time, between 1941, that is the, when Mussolini declared war on the United States, and October 1942, Italians who had not acquired citizenship were declared to be enemy aliens, and they were forced to uh, register at the post office. Uh, do we have any of those records? Are they available? I have not seen any for Chicago. I have seen them in St. Paul, Minnesota. Though they're on microfilm for St. Paul in St. Paul, but I've never seen them here in Chicago. Yeah, that would be a nice collection for us yeah. here. In California, it was especially bad, and the Italians were treated about half as badly as the Japanese which was pretty bad. Pretty bad. Uh, but uh, the, the president, the administration, recognized fairly early that we needed, uh, the country needed to have the support of Italian-American young men in the military. So they withdrew the designation. And also Mussolini's anticipation that the Italian Americans would rise up and uh, <laughs> s uh, support him uh, were uh, grossly over exaggerated, and uh, Italian Americans uh, were uh, not a problem uh, as far as loyalty was concerned. Mm -hmm. I have a question. I, I don't have the paper because I don't think my father saved it, but my father got a letter from Mussolini saying that you should come to Italy and fight for me. But he never kept the letter, ah. and at least that he told me, I haven't been able to find it. And I don't know any other Italian person that got that letter, so I don't know how... If anybody's was. got that letter, give a get a copy to Dominic for the yeah. museum. <laughs> but I mean, why, how did they even find... Because my father came when he was eight. And then this would, he would have been 25. That's 20. called, yeah, that's called a mass mailing if there ever was one. That's, <laughs> well, I've never, I, that's, that's a good question, how they got the address. Yeah, I've never heard of a particular letter, but Mussolini, through the Italian uh, consulate in Chicago, was keeping tabs on Italian Amer uh, immigrants and uh, bidding for their support, offering free trips to Italy to keep them in the sphere of, uh, of uh, fascism. Uh, and so there, there was a, a strong attempt uh, by uh, Mussolini to do that. And uh, uh, you should be, uh, also there, the wedding bands, uh, after the uh, invasion of Ethiopia, he asked for uh, gold and silver from uh, the American, uh, Italian Americans. And uh, many of them, we have a, a, a headline upstairs, 4,000 couples, uh, appear at the, uh, the armory uh, to re-dedicate uh, their marriage with a, now a, 
a, a, a steel band that Mussolini provided, and he took the gold ones. <laughs> what a fair trade, right? Yeah, right. Well, at, when he took Ethiopia, we weren't at war yet, so people probably willingly gave up the wedding ring for their leader. Uh, but once we were at war, yeah, I, I, I've spoken to a number of people, and I know there's some that are in a couple of the documentaries on Italians in Chicago who said, hey, we were all, we were fine with Mussolini, everything was good, and then all of a sudden he got tied in with Hitler, and what the hell, you know, what's this about? Now And now I've got to take junk from my non-Italian friends at school or guys in the military here or whatever. So, yeah. Um, the the, the flip-flop on that. That's, that was a very good point. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't, like I say, I, the, the, I was going to make one more point on citizenship because if you're looking for it, when we get to talk about it in detail, before 1922, I believe, uh, if a husband became a citizen, his wife born overseas, wherever, it got grandfathered in. So that means there's no separate paper for her. It, she will be listed under his paper. Now, do you know whether he became a citizen before 22 or after 22? It, it depends on what you know about him. Um, but it will limit the, you know, the detail and the amount of information about the wife and about the Italian-born or just European-born minor children. Um, and, and, and believe me that everything I'm telling you now also I know we're here about our Italian ancestry, but we happen to have another ancestry for the most part. This stuff's applying to the same for other parts of Europe. The information I'm telling you is you're not going to get accurate birth locations uh, from a death certificate and all that. So uh, th this will help you with any of your um, ancestry. Um, Social Security is... Um, now they stopped, it used to be, it, they, they pretty much started it, well the index, the data that was put on genealogy websites, sort of kind of starts in 1962, but there's others, a few things before then. And then in 2014, I guess too many people were stealing identities. And so because of those few people, they took the database and they said, okay, we're not going to update that for genealogists till the end of time. Um, so if you've got somebody who died after 2014, they're not going to be in here. Uh, if they died before 1962, they're unlikely to be in there. But basically, and, and um, self-employed typically won't be in there. And, uh, no, wait, let me, no, self-employed might be. Um, government workers, teachers frequently won't be in there because they're, they didn't get their benefits from Social Security, they got it from their school contract or whatever. Uh, but if you're looking, if you, if you're, it's like, okay, I'm looking for my grandfather's kid brother, and I don't know what year he was born, but I know he died in June of 1990, I went to the funeral, you go to Social Security Index, now that's an official piece of paper that somebody filed that birth date. So if you don't have a birth certificate yet, this is a place to get that information, you know. Um, this is a good moment to just talk about where information comes from because it's like, oh yeah, I know when I know when my grandfather was born because my mother told me. That's good, okay, but maybe mom wasn't 100% accurate. Maybe mom was told the wrong birth date, okay? Um, my mother's mother was fifth generation Chicago Irish and my dad's mother's Polish. So I had no nana after all. I'm, I'm, te I'm teaching Italian genealogy without a, an Italian grandmother. Uh, but both of them were, one was born November 12th, 1904. The other one was born November 15th of 1904. One Chicago, one Poland. So that weekend every year was grandma birthday weekend, okay? So then after my Busha died, I finally found her baptism record. I called my dad on the phone. I said, hey, Dad, I'll give you $1,000 if you can tell me the birth date of your own mother. He says, I guess it's not November 12th. I said, yeah, that'd be too easy. I don't, and I don't have the $1,000. I only bet on a sure thing. Uh, so, yeah. So it turned out that she was baptized on November 5th and born on November 4th or something. It was a different date. Com you know, 
okay, why did she go by the other date? Is it a saint's day thing? I, you know, who knows? Or she just, nobody told her. So she just went with the date that was close and that was good enough. But that's the date that's on every piece of official paper in the United States forever. And they're all wrong. Okay. It's, luckily, they, she didn't carve it on her stone. <laughs> or my dad didn't. I mean, he could have. But, uh, yeah, I, I believe me, I know too many people whose stones are wrong. Because even the family didn't have the data that they needed to back it up. Um, oh, yeah, I had another, I ran into another quick thing. These are just neat stories that you're, you're going to go, yeah, I have this too. Um, I found somebody who was born January 1st, 1909. And they're tied in with the Armanetti uh, liquor distributor family. And I was talking to one of those cousins and they said, well, I got to correct your chart. Okay. He was born October 10th, 1908. I said, mm, okay, but I got a document here <laughs> that says November for, or January 1st, 1909. The actual Italian record said it. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I know what the record says. Okay, you know, I, I don't want to get in an argument, but here it is. Uh, he was born October 10th of 1908. They did not register the birth, and they gave him a birth date of January 1st, 1909, so it would delay by a year his conscription into the Italian military. I said, okay, well, I guess October, you know, because his stone was wrong, according to the record I had. And then after she pointed that out, I noticed the, uh, I guess the word would be plethora of January 1st, January 2nd births in the 1900s, 1910s, uh, that all of us, it's like, okay, so they did, they, they, this line on New Year's morning, everybody going in, yeah, this six-year-old kid's my, was born January 1st yesterday, and okay. So you're going to run into that. So you're, even if you find an exact official document, there, there's an occasional where it won't be quite right. Um, so... Uh, let me zip through a couple of more things here. I'm not sure how uh, long I'm expected to go, but I can go on forever. Um, it's um, So another place for birth date, occasionally birthplace, are draft cards. Those are also on Ancestry and um, on uh, Family Search as well. And uh, so the World War I, as I recall, they only put the birth location on some of them. There were three different drafts, depending on the age of the person, and they only put the birth location on one group of them. Uh, so it's just a kind of a roll of the dice whether you're going to find that data there, but it's a good place to look. Um, and, and then uh, you know, if somebody died more recently, funeral card, uh, might have the birth date on there if they are putting that on there. Now, uh, if you're looking for death notices and obituaries in the more recent time frame, you're going to find that the, a tremendous number of them are, uh, you have to Google and you find it on the funeral home site and not on the Tribune or the Sun-Times or whatever. Um, the good news is that because they're not paying by the word necessarily, you get a little bit longer of an obit <laughs> on the funeral home one, and those frequently are copied and pasted into the find-a-grave record for the same person. So you can trip over a pretty long, you know, Vito Russo was born January 3rd, 1918 in Noicatero-Bari. Okay, they might not put that in the Chicago Tribune. It's like, okay, Vito Russo, he's dead. He's a queen of heaven. It's over. That's all they put, you know. Um, so that's the, the good news is the recent ones, you can, they can be a little bit longer. But you're going to have to, uh, don't just re, uh, limit yourself to searching the um, newspapers because they frequently don't list the birth date or the birthplace. But the funeral home obits might. Okay, death dates, I want to zip through some of this stuff. Obviously, death certificate. Cook County death certificates from 1878 through 1998 are available for free on familysearch.org. Come next month so I can show you how to get them. Because you may have the immediate family, your parents, whatever, but okay, I need the death certificate for Uncle Edgar, Auntie Mo, whoever. Um, 
you can save yourself 17 bucks a pop. Okay, so we're going to really want to do that. Okay, Catholic Cemetery kiosk. Who's aware of the kiosks? Okay, so if you go to any of the local Catholic cemeteries and you know the people are buried in them, um, you're going to get a burial date, which is most of the time going to be within a three, four, five days of the death date, and that'll help you get a death date for somebody, but it won't give it to you. It'll just get you close. It'll narrow down which John Smith you're looking for, okay? Um, and uh, But uh, the only issue is that if, they move, if people get moved, the burial date may not have anything to do with the death date. It's like they buried him in the <clears throat> ground, and then 25 years later, the wife died, the family decided to put them both in the mausoleum, oh. which we, we, we seem to do more than a lot of other groups, ethnic groups, is to get them into the uh, above ground mausoleums. So people get moved, and so sometimes that burial date's not the exact date. Social Security, of course, gonna have now, um, oh, by the yeah, the Cook County death certificates, when I talk about that in detail, I'm going to tell you about 10 or 11 years that are, uh, for whatever reason, they're in the index, but the records aren't available. We don't know why, and I'm afraid to stir that pot, uh, and they'll go, oh, we should take them all down. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to tell them about it. Um, the um, Social Security you're going to run into where um, they put the month and the year, but not the date. That's where that kiosk, it'll get you a date a little bit closer. Um, okay, and then um, you need older deaths. Uh, Newspapers.com, yes, it's a pay site. I don't get any percentages. Um, but you, wanna, you, you might be able to go to a public library and use it for nothing. So you can check with your public library to see if they have it. So they've got the Tribune going back into the 1800s. And so when you're looking for somebody who died in 1960, 1948, whatever, uh, you don't have to necessarily go to the few public libraries that have the microfilm of the Chicago Tribune. You can just look it up on one of these. There's another one called Newspaper Archive that's based off of a site called Genealogy Bank. Uh, again, these are sites that may or may not be available at a family history center or at a public library. Let me quick explain the difference between a family history center and an affiliate library and everything else. Um, you're going to find that when you go to look for your Italian records, that um, you can go to familysearch.org from your house and you can find the town and you can find what year and you can find the birth and then when you go to look at the images, they're not there. Why aren't they there? Why are they why are they showing me the steak and then telling me the butcher shop is closed? Okay, um, I think about food. What can I say? Uh, so you are Italian. I am. I, I got it from all directions. Believe me. It's, if I only had one ethnicity, I'd be a little little skinnier. But the um, um, what it is is that they've done contractual agreements with the uh, provincial archives in Italy, for the most part, provincial archives. They don't go to each individual town and film the records there. They go to the provincial archives. So they're getting a duplicate copy. And when I say duplicate, I don't mean a Xerox machine. I mean some poor guy got paid to sit there and write it again. I don't even know if they had carbon paper in those days. I'll say they probably didn't. So, uh, so they go there and they say, okay, well, we'll film this and we'll make it available on the proviso that people come to the Family History Center. Who's been to a Family History Center before? Okay. You are, you are in the beginner class. That's a good. That, if, if you all said, oh yeah, okay, then you're in, you're in the early class here. Okay. Family History Center. Quick description of that. Actually, I think that's coming up in a later slide. I'll talk, uh, and if not, I'll, I'll quick zip through it. Uh, death notices. I think I mentioned this. Uh, funeral home websites uh, frequently have. And it, What's so cool about a lot of, now it's cool, someone's dead, but the funeral home uh, website that has the obit, up at the top they have a photo sometimes, and they actually have the birth date and the death date, even if it doesn't mention it in the obit. Okay, that's a free piece of information. Yes? How far do they go back? The funeral home? Not that far back, but far enough back that the newspapers kind of take it up before then. 
Uh, I think the prices on putting them in newspapers are, are is going up. I think fewer people get newspapers at home anymore. Um, you know, I mean, I've gone through. You know, I've seen you know Chicago Tribunes with you know six or seven death notices in them. Chicago Sun Times with like two or three. You know, uh, it, it it may be just that much more expensive, and with the ad, you know, with the internet being pretty much pervasive, people can. It's like, okay, they hear through social media that their cousin passed away unexpectedly or whatever. Okay, so, well, we'll wait a day or two and then we'll go online and find out where and when is the wake and the funeral. So they, if they do that with Google, who needs the newspaper? Is you know? that only for two or three years or is that like 10, that's not going back 10 years, right? Mm, I'd say five to seven oh, okay. be reasonable, yeah. I, it, the 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 funeral homes had to set their websites up and and see the value of that, you know. I mean, ultimately, it's like yes, we are doing the funeral for Elmer, and so come come visit our beautiful, wonderful funeral home, and maybe you'll use it someday for your family. They, you know, they want to get you in. Um, marriages they go right back to the fire, seventy one. Uh, there's some later than 1950. Those are the indexes a little dicey on the marriages. Uh, like I say, the citizenship papers that I mentioned earlier will give you marriage dates, marriage places um, uh, quite uh, frequently. You know, the marriage dates on those, eh, not always, you know, not always exactly right. I think, and, and, and they made sure that when they put it on an official piece of paper, that marriage date was at least nine months before the birth date of the first kid. <laughs> they aren't always in reality, because when they filed their marriage paper in Italy or in Chicago, okay, kid wasn't here yet, you know. I, I, got, a, I got a phone call some many years ago from a cousin in St. Paul. And I don't hear from them very often, so I'm like, uh-oh, who died? Yeah. You know, you, whenever you hear from somebody that hey, you haven't talked to, who died? Yeah. Nobody died. Uh, we're getting ready for my parents' 50th anniversary. I said, rut row. Yeah. I, I, I declined to answer on the grounds that the answer <laughs> may tend to incriminate me. They're saying, because I knew what the question was, because I knew I had the marriage license copy. They said, "Was should we be having the 50th anniversary this year, or should we be having it next year?" I said, "I decline to answer on the grounds." Okay, so they knew what the answer was, because if it was this year, their son was born a year and a half later, I wouldn't have to decline. Uh, so yeah, so you're gonna, you're gonna find stuff there. I found some marriage records uh, that they filed the license. And then they didn't go through with the marriage. The top half has, I'm applying for the license, we're applying for the license, and down the bottom it says, okay, we have the justice of the peace, or what church, what priest actually did the ceremony. And in some cases it says, marriage license returned without the wedding. And uh, if you ever find one of those, it's, it's, it's cool, because then you ask their kids, say, do you know your mom and dad tried to get married when they were both 16 years old. <laughs> and I bet her dad was not thrilled. And that probably, so you get you run into that kind of stuff. Um, marriage dates and places. The US Census might give you a number of years married. Uh, I'm gonna say this about census records. The marriage number of years is fairly accurate most of the time. The age of the mom, uh, in 1910, she was 32. In 1920, she was 38. <laughs> and in 1930, she was 45. And then, okay, something's wrong with these dates. Be careful of ages is all I'm saying. There's, uh, I, again, not to generalize, but there are fewer errors in the men's ages than in the females' ages. This is just my observation of the records I have read. This is not a commentary on anything else. Um, newspapers, again, if, you're, if, if your family is suburban uh, early on or later, if the, you, you, can, you might trip over that, oh, 
Elmer and Anna had a 50th anniversary at such and such a place and they invited people over. So, okay, 50th anniversary. Now you can go back 50 years and you've, you've got a marriage date for them. Uh, or it might have the original marriage notice, um, but that's more small town paper. I'm finding marriage data for cousins in my age bracket or maybe 10 years older that got married in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and they're in the old, um, they're in the papers getting married. So you get a, a, a date from that, yeah. Yeah, I'm from Chicago Heights and the Chicago Heights Star really covered the community. Uh, they would report if someone had visitors, uh, family visitors from Ohio are staying with yeah. so and so. Yeah. Uh, and, and they began covering Italian weddings in great detail uh, in the 19, uh, late 20s, early 30s. So uh, there are very rich resources if you can find them. Yeah, absolutely. Those two newspaper sites I mentioned probably have your paper in it. It, it all depends if they've gotten around to filming it or how late they filmed yeah, it. Yeah, it's spotty. Mm -hmm. and, we can take a break when you find a good time to stop. We want to take a break and then we reconvene, or this is yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. I'll okay. go with that. Yeah. Uh, Anna, what do we have for the break? Uh, okay. as, the, as the focus of the room goes the other direction. We have a bathroom downstairs here and one on the second floor. Uh, I think the bathroom uh, down here is reserved for women, although it does have b symbols of both sexes on there. But since there are only a couple of us men, we'll agree not to go in there. Oh, sorry. Hi. Uh, let me keep this. 